Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can undervolt your Intel laptop using throttle stop. I did kind of show that in my MSI GF65 undervolting video, but that was not really a tutorial. And a lot of you beginners were confused. Okay, is undervolting safe? In short, undervolting is completely safe. I have done this on dozens of Intel laptops, and in my opinion, it is one of the best features that is available for Intel mobile chips. Undervolting is not available on Ryzen mobile yet, which is kind of a shame. Now, what is undervolting and why undervolt? Simply speaking, for some reason, most CPUs are fed more voltage than required. This results in higher power draw and as a result, higher thermals. And so more often than not, this results in thermal throttling. I have demonstrated this in my MSI G65 undervolting video. What we are going to do is lower the voltage supplied to the CPU. We just want enough voltage to be supplied so that the CPU can function perfectly and at the same time draw less power. Since the CPU is now getting adequate voltage now and not the stock voltage which is too much, the power draw reduces resulting in lower temps which finally results in higher sustained boost clocks. So with the undervolting, we are able to lower the power draw, lower the temps, increase the performance and also battery life. Now, not all laptops support undervolting, especially most 10th gen Intel laptops due to plundervolt issue. However, some brands do allow undervolting like MSI and Lenovo. Okay, now enough talk, let me show you how you can easily undervolt using throttle stop. But before that, some baseline numbers. So this is Cinebench R20 Multicore running on my 4-core i5 8300H Helios 300 and on my brother's MSI GF65 with a 6-core i5 10500H. You can see that at max, the quad-core i5 is pulling about 56 watts and the temperatures aren't bad. But that's because this laptop was cleaned and repasted with Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut about 5 months ago. But for the MSI GF65, you can see how quickly it throttles down after hitting a whopping 100 watts at peak on the CPU. That's insane. So we get 1825 points on the quad core i5 and 2585 points on the 6 core i5. Okay, now let's undervolt. So once you open throttle stop, this is where you can switch between the four profiles on the fly. Now go to options and rename the first profile as default. We want to keep the first profile as default without any undervolting applied. And I'm going to rename the other profiles as well. Game profile for gaming, performance for productivity and battery for casual office tasks. You can choose whatever name you feel like. Now we will work on the performance profile as I'm going to demonstrate the effect of undervolting through Cinemage R20 which is a CPU benchmark. Turn on speed shift and then save. Now go to FIVR. You can see a ton of options here. Now don't worry, we'll only focus on adjusting the offset voltage. Before that, let me show you the different sections in set throttle stop. So the first section are your profiles. You can select and edit each of these profiles. Then here you can control the clock speeds for each of the cores, giving you very granular controls to get the best performance to temperature ratio. For example, depending upon your CPU, anywhere between 3.5 GHz to 4 GHz across all your 6 cores or 8 cores is plenty enough for gaming. You'll get the same gaming performance, but the temperatures will be much lower. I demonstrated this in my MSI G65 undervolting video. Or you can set all your cores to the base clock to save battery life. This is something that I use when I'm doing light office tasks. Next is FIVR control, where you can switch between the CPU core and the CPU cache, which we are going to undervolt. This is where you can actually lower the offset voltage. Okay, so first select CPU core and click on unlock adjustable voltage. Now we are going to slowly lower the offset voltage. Some things to keep in mind. Not all CPUs can be undervolted to the same degree even if you have the exact same CPU model. Some can be undervolted more than others. It's all part of what is known as silicon lottery. Normally most Intel CPUs can handle negative 90 millivolt. Then do the same on the CPU cache. Okay, now disable and lock turbo power limits. Click apply. Okay, now don't close the app. We are not done yet. Let the app remain as it is. Open your favorite game or any CPU benchmark and test for stability. If your laptop crashes and shows a blue screen, don't worry. Your laptop will restart automatically without any problems. And if your laptop just freezes, just hold on to the power button for a few seconds and your laptop will restart like normal. No harm done. Don't worry. This means you have dropped your voltage too low. That means you have to try slightly higher voltage like negative 89 millivolts or negative 85 millivolts, basically anything below zero. And if you are able to successfully run your game or complete the benchmark without any issues, it means you can further lower the offset voltage. 
In my case, I know from my past experience with the i5 8300H that it can go as low as negative 150 millivolt and be rock solid stable. Any lower than that, there is a chance of instability. Now, once you find your sweet spot, click on apply and OK save voltages after throttle stop exits. One thing to note, once you click apply inside FIVR, your offset voltage is applied and will remain like that until you restart. To reapply your undervolt, you need to turn on throttle stop once again whenever you restart. Now, don't worry, it becomes a habit. I've been doing it for almost three years now. Now, click save and turn on. Now, let me show you the results. Okay, now with the undervolts applied in place, my Helios 300 now only peaks at about 50 watts and the GF65 peaks at about 80 watts. The other interesting thing is that after the boost period expires, the Helios 300 maintains 3.7 GHz to 3.8 GHz all cores, which is about 200 to 300 MHz higher than at stock. Similar case applies to the MSI GF65 as well, and more importantly, the MSI GF65 is not throttling at all throughout the entire test. And the results are in. We improved performance by about 11% for the Helios 300 and about 10% for the MSI GF65. So that's it for this video guys. I hope this video will help you utilize the full performance of your Intel laptop and also control your temps effectively. And if this video did help you, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Bye guys and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.